Happy Friday, Floss Tube. Hello, crafty friends. My name is Caroline. Welcome back. Today is Friday, March the 5th, and I am recording here in London, Ontario, Canada. So, <laughs> I know, I know, it, it always throws people uh, when I when I have it straightened. I don't straighten it myself. I only ever get this done as a really special treat at the hairdresser and as soon as I wash my hair again, it will uh, it will be curly again. So it's always a nice way to feel like a, a different woman for just a couple of days. So it is late in the day today. It is already five o'clock in the afternoon. It has been, actually it's quarter after five. And my father-in-law is showing up in 15 minutes for dinner. So. It is going to be a speedy visit today. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to get to crafty stories today. But I would love to choose a winner. Not, not a winner, but you know, like somebody from the stories that I've already read. Um, I'm going to talk it over with the, the voting panel. And I think we should, we should choose someone from the stories that have been read so far for me to send out uh, a little prize package to. And then uh, starting from next week, moving forward, then the stories that I, I uh, next Friday, I'll come back with some more stories that I have saved up. So if you haven't heard your story yet, it, they're still queued up in my email. I will get back to that next week and we'll start fresh and send out another prize, maybe in another month or so. Okay, but I did want to come on and talk to you about some of my crafts because I have plans. I have I know, I said I wasn't going to make any plans, but I'm kind of making plans and I'm really excited about my plans. And if, if you could call them plans because they really are, I don't know, but I'm inspired. So I thought maybe you would find it interesting. I know you'll find it interesting because I would find it. I did find it interesting. It's been a long day folks and I've had a lot of coffee. So if I'm talking a little faster than normal, that's probably, probably why. I was watching Carrie and Jolyn of the Little Red Mitten, um, the owners of the Little Red Mitten, which is the yarn shop in St. Thomas, Ontario, and also the Diaries Behind Leo and Roxy. So you all know um, I talk about Carrie a lot. She is the dyer of the new floss, Leo and Roxy floss. And so I was watching their last latest podcast and they were talking about a method to tackle their whips. And they're talking, of course, about knitting whips. Um, and first of all, they have a little challenge going on with um, each other. And also they invited other people to join in the challenge called the, the 100 day challenge. And so they've challenged each other to not start anything new for 100 days. So they talked a little bit about how that was going. And I'll, I'll let you go and watch their podcast to see how that's going. But the other thing they talked about was kind of a plan moving forward to tackle their whip pile. Um, whip stands for work in progress. And some of us have more whips than others. And um, I've never counted my whips. I don't, I don't really, it's not that I don't want to know the number, it's that I don't really, uh, for me, it's not really something that bothers me. I have a lot, I have a lot of whips in progress. And that's okay. However, I would like to start to work through some of them and maybe, you know, focus on having a few more finishes this year in 2021 than I had last year. And the only way to do that is to actively work on the older ones and not always be starting something new. I know it's a radical thought, isn't it? So what they were talking about on their podcast was, I believe, an idea that they got from another podcast and I'm going off my memory here. I want to say it's the wool and honey podcast. I think I'm going to have to double check that, but I, I think that's where they got it from. And I think that's a podcast. That's another yarn shop And this yarn shop either had a customer named Gideon or something like this, but it's called the Gideon method. And apparently what this method is, is that you choose five whips, and you dedicate 12 hours to each whip. Now, right away, my ears perk up because timer function and me are like best friends. I love using my timer. I use my timer all the time. I have a timer on my watch. 
so um, because I you've been if you've been here for a while you know that I I tell stories in circles and that's kind of sometimes how my brain works I tend to get distracted easily and easily and so setting a timer allows me to focus for a specific period of time knowing that there is a five minute period of time when the timer is up that I can you know lose my thoughts in something else but while the timer is going I must remain focused on the task so depending on what the amount of work is that I have to do you know I'll set the timer for an hour and I know in an hour I can have a 10 minute break where that's where you you know go to the washroom, get a drink, make a coffee, whatever, and then go back to it, set the timer, start all over again. And that has worked really, really well for me for staying structured with my work. Because when you're self-employed and you work at home, it's really easy to just go and sit down and knit a row, or maybe I'll go and watch a television show. Because um, if you're not doing it, then there, there's no boss telling me, well, you're fired. It's just me. So in order to stay structured and focused, I have found the timer to be an absolute ne necessary tool and it's worked really well. So when they're talking about timing and you know, I've talked about this before where I would choose a large project and I would set a timer for 24 hours and that I would set every time I'm stitching on that project, I would start the timer so it's counting down from 24 hours and then when the 24 hours is up then I'll rotate in the next piece. But the Gideon method takes five whips and only five and it's 12 hours per whip. So you set the timer for 12 hours and then when that 12 hours is up you can cycle in another whip or you know it's it's your system if the 12 hours is up but you that's you know you're loving it set the timer for another 12 hours and have another session at it so the um carrie mentioned an app and i found it and i downloaded what's it's called multi timer so the multi timer i found it in the app store it's free and it has six timers and so instead of choosing five whips i have chosen six because why do five when you can do six and so it looks like this and they're just little timers so you can edit in which project you want it to be attached to and um, each one is has a different color code you can even change the little icon that goes with each timer i thought that was kind of a fun little feature and then you just you just do your thing and then if your thing takes less than 12 hours you're done and then you can change it out for a new whip from the pile or maybe you've got maybe you're thinking if i finished three of my six projects maybe i could have a new start whatever but this really speaks to me and i think it's going to help me when i have so little time to do any kind of personal crafting feeling like you've only got five minutes it still feels like it's an accomplishment even though it's five minutes because that's five less minutes on that timer so i'm i'm kind of picking away at it also it gives me a focus you can you can work on these six projects which is less than me looking around at my whip pile and thinking oh well i really want to work on that and i really want to work on that and it takes away all of the indecisiveness but it's still a big enough number six that I feel that there is enough um, choice. I don't feel streamlined into only having one or two. So I think it's gonna work. So I thought I would show you what I'm starting with. Here's, here's what I've got lined up for my first six whips. And since I started this on Tuesday, I have put in 15 minutes on one of my projects and one hour and 18 minutes on another project and that's it so if i'm going to get miss patty's cowl done i need to put in some serious time on it this weekend so that is that i am dedicated to to working on miss patty's cowl this weekend so she is one of my timers so miss patty's the purple down there in the corner you can see she's still at 12 so i want to i really want to get that down this weekend i've got to knock some time off there and get that cowl 
knit up. It's downstairs. It's the only project I don't have here to show you out of the six. The other one that I put, oh, I should say 16 minutes because my timer is at 11.44, um, was my Modern Folk Embroidery Bird on a Grapevine. So I think I already had, I already had this part of the border stitched last time I showed it to you. And so I managed to come all the way down around here in 16 minutes. Looks like progress to me. I'll take it. So um, I will try to put all of the information on each of my projects in the drop down box in the description box below, just in case I forget to say any of the details about the projects. But just while I'm thinking about it, this is a 36 count silk weaver um, that I had a remnant of and uh, yeah 36 count I think it's called silver silver moon um, and it is a Zweigart base it's beautiful fabric I really really like it and the floss is the Leo and Roxy my funny Valentine so that's project number one project number two is the uh, my Firlanda sampler so I actually took it off my floor frame to show it to you because I I do have a little bit more a teeny bit more since the last time I shared it um, so let me just if you haven't seen this before I'll hold it up a little bit longer so I'm not racing to take it away it is so beautiful it's so beautiful and delicate. I just, I, I just love this so much. So this is, this is the, um, my little bit of new stitching there in that little corner there that I haven't actually physically shown you since I did it. That, that I'll try to get the color a little better for you. Back here is usually a bit better. So this is a 40 count R and R reproductions fabric in the winter's brew colorway and the floss is a really beautiful silk from Mrs. Sadis who is from Spain and the colorway is called Rouge and I just love everything about this project. It is called the Fiolanda HKVH sampler and you can find the chart for this on the silk stitching app. I am hosting a stitch along, um, a really, really slow stitch along, as stitch alongs with me usually are. Uh, it's very informal, but there is a hashtag so that you can follow along on Instagram if you're stitching this along with me. Uh, it is hashtag off the grid fear, fear and I will put that, um, I will put that in the description box below in case you have trouble figuring out how to spell Fearlanda. Um, and yeah, so that's a stitch along. Again, you can find it on the silk stitching app. It's never too late to join in. This is a massive piece. It's going to take me a long time to stitch and I love it. I just love it. One more peek. There we go. Okay. So my timer for that is still set at 12 hours and my, so that's number two. Number three, now number three is completely thanks to you guys because there has been more than one, more than two, more than three people who have asked, so where's Sarah's Afghan? How's Sarah's Afghan coming along? Did you finish it and I missed it? Yeah, no. I haven't I haven't touched it it's been in its project bag safe and sound so here it is oops my memory card was full again okay I think I'm back in place I think yeah I can hear my father-in-law downstairs so I better I better speed up a little bit um, you guys had asked me about Sarah's Afghan you know these things go in phases with me I did a very very similar Afghan for my mother um, this is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern uh, by Jared Flood and the one I did for my mother was called Umaro and it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I love that blanket. That pattern is just beautiful. Uh, but it took three years 
to knit that for my mother and that's just how I work with big projects like this I'll get into a craze and I'll knit like crazy for a couple of weeks and then it'll get put away and it'll go back in its project bag for a while and then until the next phase and for some reason I love knitting blankets in the summer I know it is it's crazy I don't know why I don't seem to mind having a massive woolly blanket on my lap in the heat of the summer it's very strange so I don't know but Sarah's blanket is called the Talon Throw T-A-L-O-N and it is another Brooklyn Tweed pattern I'll put the link down in the drop-down box below and this is how it looks so I have done since you guys reminded me that I really should get back to it uh, I have knit two rows <laughs> And those two rows, I started with my 12 hour timer and now I'm at 10 hours and 42 minutes. So yes, two rows on this afghan took me that long. Because first of all, I had to find out, I had to remember where I was in the pattern. I had to remember where I was in the chart. This is not an, this is not mindless knitting. This is not knitting that you can just go on autopilot and knit. You have to think, you have to count, you have to follow the pattern and you have to read your knitting. You have to read the row before the of you know where you're knitting so that you don't have to then waste time and go back and fix it if you're paying attention you can read your knitting and you need the chart less because you know what goes where and there is a lot of cabling in this blanket like i've never knit a project that had so many cables like every row every other row excuse me the backside row is a knit and purl combination but the front side, almost, almost every row has cables in it. And so the best thing I ever did was my friend Dawn taught me how to cable without a cable needle. And it has, it has made a world of difference. But it's still this one row that took so the longest, every five stitches, there's a, a two, a, so a four stitch cable and four stitches, four stitches, four stitches, and it, it, it just took a long time and getting back into the rhythm of it. So I have reset my progress keeper. Where is it? So I have reset my progress keeper, which is the, I love coffee. Now my progress keepers came from Carrie, the creative curator. And that is creative with a K and curator with a K. She has an Etsy shop in Australia. She's Australian. Uh, and she makes the most beautiful chain mail, scissor fobs, um, zipper pulls. Her stuff is amazing, like really, really beautiful. And I don't know that she has any progress keepers in her shop, but if you wanted some, if you, if you messaged her, um, maybe she might make some for you because look at so that's a little chain mail progress one of the ones that she made there all of the ones on this blanket were from carrie and they are they're my favorites that one's not going to focus there we go my favorite one is a captured bead this little purple guy i've shown this one before but it's just so pretty i'll show it again there look at that gorgeous 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 so that's Sarah's afghan two whole rows added in but that's okay it'll get done so that's project three project four is my Jeanette Douglas blooming bouquet which is another stitch along that I am hosting and that probably everybody else is gonna finish before me so there is another hashtag for this one if you'd like to join in and you can choose any of the blooming bouquet patterns you don't have to stitch this one you can stitch any of them they're all gorgeous so Jeanette Douglas designs she is a wonderful Canadian designer and this is number four which is called beautiful I am stitching this on the called for fabric with the called for materials and the hashtag is uh, what is the hashtag? Oh, it has completely, I think it's off the grid JD Blooming Bouquet Sal. I'll, I think it's already in the drop down box, but I'll double check and make sure. Um, I don't think I have put any stitches in this since the last time I, I showed it to you. 
So that has a 12 hour timer to go so that I can get some really nice progress on that. Number five. Number five is my brand new, because how could I not? How could I not have my brand new start have its own timer? Uh, the Modern Folk Embroidery Fruits of Plenty 2021 Stitch Along. So you'll re you will remember that I started this on March the 1st, which was not that long ago, just a few days ago, Monday. And my goal was to have, was to cut my fabric to size, serge th the part that needed it, and get those first few stitches in. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> my fabric is cut to size and serged, and I got three stitches, three of them. So there, there they are. There are my first three stitches. So I, I'm not a hundred percent convinced that I have chosen the right floss and fabric combination, but I have a funny feeling that I have, but that I need to get some more stitches in and I need to get the contrasting color in, in order to make the final decision. So my two colors are Hey Sailor and Polar Ice because look, when you see them together like that, there's a lot more um, oomph, right? So, but I'm not, I, I always, I also love projects that norm, that you might have to take a closer look at to see all of the details. My, I did an ink circles was the Cirque Day circles and it was a sort of uh, variegated gold thread on mu like mustard gold color on a khaki fabric and this reminds me a little bit of that because it was a little bit subtle but it really was beautiful and I have a funny feeling this is going to be similar so yes three whole stitches um, and my timer is set at 12 hours so there's that and then last but not least, number six is Miss Patty's cowl. When Miss Patty's cowl is finished, I am going to be replacing it with um, a pair of socks. So this is the one that I have finished. This is the Leo and Roxy. Oh boy. I've said it so many times and I, for I still forget. Um, where is it? August 2019 Sock Club. It's an 80-20 sock, 80% merino, 20%, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I have used the gray mini that came with the set for the heel and toe. So this has been nicknamed the Fruity Pebble Sock by a lovely viewer who, um, when she said that, I haven't been able to think of it any other way. I am on the second sock. I haven't knit a single stitch in this in a couple weeks, but that's okay. The plan is, as soon as Miss Patty's cowl is finished, this is going on the timer because 12 hours should definitely see a finished sock, which would mean I will have a finished pair. So that is exciting. I'm almost putting, oh, the yarn from Sarah's afghan. Everything is all over the place here going to take me 15 minutes to tidy up. Okay, so there was something else and now it's it's left my it's left my memory. Oh, oh, I now I know what it is. The reason the double reason why I want to get back to these socks is because the codependent knitters, uh, my friends Don and Lisa, the codependent knitters podcast, they are having a Leo and Roxy make along. So um, they're focusing on yarns. You, um, Leo and Roxy just launched a brand new direct from the mill line of yarns, 12 different colors that are come from the mill and they are beautiful Leo and Roxy colors. They are selling them now across Canada. They've just launched. It is, it's a, it's a pretty big deal for Carrie and Jolyn and I, I just couldn't be more proud of them. It's a really, really big thing that they've done, that they've accomplished, and I'm really excited to see this grow for them. And so Dawn and Lisa of the Codependent Knitters are hosting a knit-along that um, is any Leo and Roxy yarn 
if you would like to, if you either have a whip in progress like me, like my socks, or um, you want to start a brand new project with, with their yarn, then I think you'll have to go and watch their video to to find out when the deadline is to have a project done but you can enter um for a really lovely leo and roxy giveaway through don and lisa through the codependent knitters and so i thought i'm gonna go for it because i should be done miss patty's cowl well before then and then i only have the second sock to finish so this might actually be a make along that i might be able to squeeze in and finish if i try you won't know if you don't try right so I might as well try and yeah so that's exciting okay and that's it for me that is it for me today I um I have a little bit of news it's it's not sad news but it's kind of different news it, it's it's news that I should probably share with you in case you're a viewer of the fiber friends podcast uh, many of you will know that uh, I started out as a member of the Fiber Friends podcast more than three years ago. It was the first podcast I started recording, and it was a few months later after that that I started recording these podcasts by myself that had more of a cross-stitch uh, bent. Um, the three of us who started the group, Louise, Adrian, and myself, um, we recorded for a few years together, and then Adrian left the group to move on to other pursuits. And you know, she was really busy with work, and it was it it wasn't a good fit for her to continue on with the group. So she left the group. We added an, another third member, Cheryl, who is who is just she's she's the best. She's another bag maker like me. She lives in St. Mary's, Ontario. Her bags are completely different, really beautiful fabrics, different styles. Um, her her shop name is called My Needle Crafts. And if you've been a watcher of the Fiber Friends, you'll know Cheryl already. But I had to make the decision uh, for myself that I have decided to let the girls record the podcast just as the two of them now. So the Fiber Friends is now going to be only hosted by two members, and that will be Louise and Cheryl. So it's kind of like a fresh start for them to start the podcast is just the two of them and and can and continue and carry on uh, oops it always happens it always happens that when I have the full memory card then my battery dies so it should be a lesson it should be a lesson to me to just you know just replace the battery every time then we wouldn't have this problem okay so the fiber friends uh, are going to continue on without me so and it's a it's a it's the end of a bit of a chapter for me but it's also a fresh start for Louise and Cheryl and it means that I can feel like I can share a little bit more of my knitting um, I know even more than I do in in here and not feel like I have to save all of it or some of it or whatever for um, for recording the fiber friends because it was getting a little tricky when you don't have a lot of progress to share feeling like I'm talking about it here and then I'm talking about it again on a podcast where many people watch both podcasts so I think this will be a nice fresh start for everybody and uh, those girls are always going to be good friends and we had uh, Louise and I and Cheryl and I we we chatted separately last night but we all have uh, a zoom knitting date for next Wednesday night where we can just chat with each other and not um, not uh, have to mind our p's and q's for recording as it were not that not that we always did that on the fiber friends if you watch the original episodes you'll know what I mean anyways okay I, I, I really need to go I really need to go but it's the I feel like it feels like it's been forever since I spoke with you on Monday it's only been a couple of days but so much has happened this week that uh, it feels like feels like it's been forever and I had lots to tell you so that is it for me for now for real I can hear them downstairs getting a little anxious to start the Friday evening so I better I better get going and uh, I hope that you're well I hope that you're safe and that you have some crafting to do this weekend something to relax and enjoy I um I will be uh, working away, still packing up, organizing, going through stuff, getting ready for the big move. We have access to the space next Thursday, 
So it's going to be a big, exciting week next week. Um, yep, I'll be, uh, we get access to the space and that's when the renovations are going to start. So we've done a lot of the pre-work in deciding of what needs to be done and colors and flooring and, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a few questions that have been asked, uh, is it going to be a, a, a storefront? And the answer to that is no, uh, it's not going to be a storefront. It's just a workspace, a big workspace. And um, uh, yes, Luna is going to be there with me. So that's the other question that I get asked all the time. Is Luna going with you? Is Luna going with you? Yes, Luna is definitely coming with me. She is a very attached and she has some separation issues um, and it would it wouldn't be fair to leave her alone all day long she would she would not do well at all and and she would she would damage things in the house she does that now like she's she not if we're here she's fine but if you leave the house for half an hour or whatever if you forget to close doors and things like that it's like baby proofing a house if you leave to go to the grocery store, you have to baby proof the house because if there's anything, she's going to find it and she's going to have fun with it. So she's definitely coming to work with me. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a big, exciting week. And uh, when I see you on Friday, I'll, I'll, if, I, if I have a chance to take some, some video, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'm not exactly sure what events are actually going to happen at this point. And I have big things happening in the shop at the same time. Um, so here's a heads up. There's going to be a big shop update next Friday. So that's March 15th. I haven't set a time yet or anything, um, but I have new Leo and Roxy colors. So I'll share that with you next week. Okay, so that's it for me. I really am gonna go now and I will see you, I'll see you on Monday for for a floss tube. Take care everybody. Happy stitching, happy weekend.